is John, and I'm here to hopefully be helpful to you. Um, we'll see. I wanted to speak about insights of self-reliance today because the when when you have done the looking and uh, the the fearful ideas and expectations and so forth that are the the course of uh, human understanding of what they're doing, of what we're doing, uh, begins to change and and uh, and reveal itself in a way that it has not in the past. This is what I'm speaking of when I talk about insights. As the fear begins to um, fall away, what arises in its place are really kind of uh, beautiful and understand a beautiful understanding of what has been happening to you all your life because of the uh, the, uh, the fear itself. As the fear begins to go, your your mind begins to change. It begins to lead to to um, it begins to lose the fearfulness, which is the energy that has been motivating it all along. But the the insights that come into that are themselves entirely um, idiosyncratic to your own mind. They have nothing to do with anybody else's mind. Nothing you can have to say about the insights that you have have, uh, have been given uh, are of no use to anybody else. They're only of use to you. And mostly it's a use that is more um, there's a more understanding of what's happening to your mind. It doesn't, these insights, these understandings of what's happening to you, how your mind is changing, how, how it's uh, much better than it was, or in some cases much worse than it was. You know, the, the losing of the fear is not a, uh, a, uh, not without consequences that can be confusing themselves. And, and these insights are among those things. The insights that you see about your mind, first of all, they are entirely, they have no bearing on anybody else's mind. Your, your ideas about what's happened to your mind and how it was in the past and what's happening now is of no use to anybody else. And in fact, when it's talked about to other people, particularly those who are not as, uh, whose development of their minds at, now that the fear is gone is, is new, newer than yours, your insights can cause actual confusion and and uh, kind of uh, uh, food, food for the fear of those who are listening to you. Because your insights and the things that have happened to your mind are completely idiosyncratic. They have nothing to do with anybody else's mind, and they really don't have anything to do with your mind as the, as the fear begins to fall away. We get kind of, and I have had this experience myself, we get kind of, uh, well, I don't know, just so uh, interested in the fact that your mind is changing. It's, uh, uh, it's becoming clearer. It's becoming less fraught with fear. It's becoming uh, open enough to see what's happening and, and, and the possibilities that can come from it. But those are just for you is that each mind 
each mind that even my mind. If I talk to you about the insights that come to my mind, they would do you no good whatsoever. And I have had not only uh, after the fear, but in the in the uh, in my life prior to the fear, I have had insights that have blown me away, that made things so clear to me. One of them was an insight that caused me to see that the only thing that could be done to help people at all was to destroy capitalism. And since the destruction of capitalism is a, is, is a huge thing, I couldn't do very much about it, but I did do things that were really stupid, like like uh, blowing up uh, electrical towers and robbing banks and all of the things that I did following that insight that capitalism was a problem and that something could be done to, about it by punishing those who are uh, working with it. That didn't work out so well, <laughs> you could say. <laughs> It ended in 20 years in prison, and and, uh, and and now, actually, to tell you the truth, it's all of that is what brings me here to you. But the insights that brought me here to you were bogus. They were nothing. They were wrong, really. And as 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 I have in the time in which the fear has began to leave me, I have seen insights into the nature of my mind that are, uh, to, in my idea, are fantastic and, and beautiful and absolutely true and so forth and so on. But I don't burden you with those things. I have no interest whatsoever in burdening you in the insights that have come to me in the absence of the fear. That it can do nothing to you whatsoever other than give you something to compare to your own mind as it develops and, and becomes, becomes sane in the absence of fear. What has happened to me and what continues to happen to me is nothing, nothing valuable to you whatsoever. What's valuable to you is self-reliance. To ignore my ideas about what might come upon you when you begin to be free of the fear, if I were to try to tell you what it was going to be like to you, I would merely be giving you, giving your mind and the soldiers of fear something else to beat you up with, because it's not happening to you in the way it did to me. And it won't happen to you in the way it did to me either. <laughs> so the idea of insights as things that can be tra tra can be um, helpful to other people, in my understanding, in my understanding, is false. Insights into the nature of the way your mind turns around in the absence of fear are of no use to anybody in the world except you. And that's the truth. Each mind is unique. And each mind, as it, as it uh, moves from fearfulness to self-reliance, is unique, completely unique. So the things that come to me are of no use to you. The only insights that are of use to you are <clears throat> the insights that arise in your own mind in the actual nature of the development of your mind for your fear. And it's also true that uh, that insights, even for you, are of no, it's of no use to, to um, you know, put them in a closet and hold on to them so you can look at them if they come again, because insights are not anything else but ideas, and they go. 
they, they just go, they go away. The mind is, whether, especially the mind that is free of fear, is, is uh, interested in things. But to feed the mind, your own mind, the insights that insights that come and go in your mind doesn't help your mind either. It's just the product of your mind's healing. It's the product of what has happened to you as you have lost the fear of life. It's nothing that you can <laughs> take, you know, put in your, I don't know, like keep close to your heart or anything of the kind, because the truth about the mind is, the human mind, is that whether it's driven by fear or driven by intelligence, it is endlessly moving, endlessly looking elsewhere, really. And that's good. It, you know, it's not so good when you're driven by fear, but when the fear is gone, the fact that the mind presents to you many ideas about what you should be doing or could be doing or would be useful to you and, and so forth and so on, these things are entirely true to you, to nobody else. And what happens if we, if we, if we try to use the things that have come to us as ways of teaching people how to be free, that's just a false thing. It's just part of the habitual, the, the habits of thought and ideas that persist for a long time, quite a long time. They don't do much more harm anymore, but they persist for quite a long time. And the idea of, of communicating your insights to other people is just false. People are, each mind is absolutely unique. He, each mind, as it, as it is done with fear, becomes an absolutely free, but uh, only true to you, only to you. So, <clears throat> so there's no use, really, in massaging them into and, and telling them how good they are or telling yourself how good you are because the mind itself is constantly in motion, constantly in motion. Every, every thing that arises within your mind, everything that arises within your, your life, is is cause for the mind to say to see and understand something else something new about you but only you and not even you forever everything is changing always everything is always changing the one thing that doesn't change once you're free of the fear is the development of your intelligence and the development of your understanding of the nature of your life not my life i could tell you about my life i could tell you what the things have come to me and carla and i could talk to you to the cows come home about the wonderful things that we have seen in the, in the many years that we have been working in this in this particular uh, realm but, but that's nothing. What matters, the only thing that matters once the fear is gone, is self-reliance. That's the only thing that matters. And the, the chewing on past insights is, uh, is, is not self-reliance. It's reliance on something that it used to be and is gone now. For the rest of your life, there will be things that come that are very valuable and very beautiful, but they will depart also, because that's the way the mind is. The mind does not stick on anything, except, you know, 
<laughs> happiness or you know satisfaction and uh, self-reliance. Self-reliance is all of it. Self-reliance is the fundamental gift of the loss of the fear of life. Self-reliance. And that means, self-reliance means you. Your mind. Not my mind. Not Joe Blow's mind. Your mind. And the other thing that happens if we start burdening people with the details of our own personal experience is that you stifle the possibility of people because no mind is the same. No mind is the same. So that when people who are new to this work and are just beginning to see the power of it, when we start talking to them about how it's going to be, what we are doing is, is, uh, is making it much more difficult for them to find space in their own minds to understand how their own minds work. It helps them develop self-reliance. And the, the, uh, the preaching of what has happened to me or to you or to Carla or to anybody else, it actually sh shortstops self-reliance. Because people who come, and, and many of it, many people, and probably maybe you even, people who come new to this work, they are looking for somebody to tell them how they should act. Because that's the way the fear works. And that's the habit that we have, even when we lose the fear of life and, and begin to lose the, its, uh, its effects, uh, the self-reliance does not what I'm trying to say is that self-reliance comes over time and it comes over and within a mind that is not constantly being bombarded by what it should be really because that's what we do when we talk about people talk to people about what I have, what's happened to me that's what we do we tell them, this is the way you will be. And that's not true. And it's just a confusion. And it stymies self-reliance in the people who are listening to you. This is not an easy task, this development from fear to self-reliance. It's not an easy task. It isn't magic. It takes... It takes the willingness to learn for yourself what you are and what you can be and what you can do and what you cannot do and what you want and what you do not want. And all of these things are entirely idiosyncratic to you. And when we start telling people about that, we are telling them this is the way it's going to be for you. And that's just a lie. It's a lie. And if we hold on to our own insights, determined that it's going to be what I thought it was going to be, you know, the, in the first year of, uh, of, uh, of uh, freedom from fear, what the things that I will think then, in the beginning, will go away because everything is always in motion and there is no time when you will have a comprehensive, complete understanding of what's happening in your mind. Really. Doesn't mean you're not going to try to try try to understand. I try to understand. Carla tries to understand. But I don't try to bring my understanding of my mind, which is absolutely unique. You see, that's the thing you have to see. Every single human mind is absolutely unique. There's no two minds alike at all. There are 
our uh, efforts to be have minds be uh, alike when the fear is gone, when the fear is working. But once the fear is gone, there's no use to it whatsoever. You must learn for yourself. You must see for yourself what's happening in your mind. You must learn for yourself how to recognize actual sane understandings of, of your life and uh, the occasional uh, stupidity that comes from a lifetime of fear. And the fear, well, that. So my, what I'm trying to get to here, the main thing I'm trying to get to is don't, first of all, before the don't, first of all, really be willing to understand what has happened to your own mind. And you learn about what has happened to your own mind by looking at the output of the mind as it grows and changes and so forth. And this, the insights that come from that are entirely unique to you, but oh my God, they are so important. And they really, re really reveal to you what's been going on all your life and what, can, what is possible now. So you pay attention to your mind. And I will also tell you that no matter how far into this it, you will be, you will find as you look into your mind, Dust, kind of like dust bunnies when they fear. It's kind of, kind of uh, interesting. But mostly what you want to do is you want to understand, and that's part of your mind. And what you want to understand is what's happening to your mind, what you can do with it, what it means to you, and so forth and so on. But that's entirely you, your mind. It's not Joe Blow's mind or Gene's, Gene Blow's mind. It's your mind. And it not only is your mind, and therefore not having anything that can uh, uh, <laughs> anything you can take it away from you, the only, the only thing that you can do to help people is to Tell them to look, and then tell them to start STA. Don't tell them what it feels like to be free, because there is no, there is no standard of what it is like to be free. And you can be sure uh, the one thing I want you to really understand is that let me see, what am I trying to say? The, insult, the, the impulse to share insights is another Another way in which the soldiers of fear are trying to keep your attention. You, you, you follow me? The impulse to share insights is nothing more than the work of the soldiers of fear trying to keep your attention. And you can see it. And you can bid them farewell. So, by all means, understand your mind. And there's, it, there will never be a time when it will be stable because it's in constant motion, because life is in constant motion. There'll never be a time that it'll be stable. There'll never be a time when there won't be insights and understandings that arise within you. And there won't be a time when those insights and understandings pass away. Everything is in motion. Leave people alone. Work with yourself. That's all you know. All you know 
is you. You don't know me. You don't know anybody else. You don't know what people are going through at all when they come to the when they come to uh, the possibility of SDA and changing their lives. We don't know anything at all about what's going on in their minds. Nothing. And the, the, the impulse to pretend that their minds are the same as mine and therefore the things that have been so interesting and so free are nothing other than chains for other people's minds as they try to have the same same outcome as you have. Human minds are incredibly complicated. <laughs> but, but I wouldn't get I wouldn't put away mine for anything in the world. Okay, we have a question here. The question is, what about sharing experiences on the forum? How should that be handled? The same thing goes with the forums. We well these forums are have been um, almost miraculous in in our understanding of what's going on, and certainly in your understanding of what's going on. But again, whether you're in the forum or walking on the street, you have to see that your mind is different from everybody else's mind, and everybody else's mind is different from yours. So the insights that come to you in the forums should be dealt with in the same way, rather than encouraging people to get to the point where everybody knows the same things and the outcome of it is the same, is false. It's just false. So what you might want to do is find a way to help people develop their own insights and the development of their mind as it goes without reference to what's happened to you. You know, I'm talking to you now and I'm giving you nothing about the insights that have come to me and Carla, nothing, nothing whatsoever. And, and yet I managed to speak for 30 minutes about what I thought would be an interesting and valuable thing to bring to you. So one of the things you could tell the folks in the forum when they come in is that your experience is going to be completely uh, your experience. The way that it, your mind op works will be completely different from any other mind in the forums or outside of the forum. So the, the help that you can give to the folks when they come new to the forum is to speak to them about that. To speak to them about the certainty of what's going to happen to them without the, the uh, details. Um, and encourage them that, to learn how to look at their own mind. Encourage them how to, to find the insights that certainly will come and see them for what they are and then let them do whatever they do in those minds. But you don't have to know what they do. You don't have to, you know, they don't have to tell you what's happening to them any more than telling them what's happening to you. So, and this is a, this is a difficult thing. It's, uh, there's a natural and especially uh, there's a natural impulse to have confirmation of everything that happens. And this is part of the fear. It's a part of the lack of self-reliance, the lack of 
uh, of uh, knowing what you knowing that you can you know what was happening to you, and uh, so what you want to do is if you can help people, you can help them by encouraging them to learn about their minds as they, as it develops and opens up, and and without recourse to a long recitative about what has happened to your mind. This is what I see. Oh my God, yes, I see that. Oh, right. And then somebody who new to the forum, new there, will certainly glom on to that idea and, and look for it to be their idea in the, uh, late, uh, uh, sooner or later. And that cannot help them. Cannot help them. What can help them is to tell them that that how that you are you you are unique as are they, and to encourage them to by all means encourage them to keep an eye on their mind and. And whether good or bad, keep an eye on their mind. Pay attention to what's going on in their mind. Pay attention to the insight, insights that come to them. But don't pass them on to me, really. And don't pass yours on to them. Now, I know this is hard. What I'm asking you to do is really hard. It is, uh, and part of that is because of the lingering need to say it, to have your own insights uh, verified. And uh, that's not necessary either, really. Is that helpful at all? One of the main things that's really hard to understand and see is that there's no such thing as a mind that is like yours. There's no such thing. Every mind is absolutely uh, like idiosyncratic. Yours. John? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's also that uh, what you were talking about is that, you know, um, reading about other people's experiences only creates expectations, yeah. and uh, they are necessarily false because that's a, a different mind. So it, it, it diverts the person's attention from their own process to try to be like somebody else, and, and that's unconscious, because you know we assume that that's what's going to happen to me, and then you miss what's really happening to you. Is that clear? Did I make myself clear? I think so. Uh, You're crowding the person's process with your own experience and not giving them space to find their own, you know, trying to be helpful. And the greatest gift of the loss of fear is the ability to see for yourself what, what you are and what you are like and what's happening <laughs> to you as, it, as it's happening to you. Not as it happened to me or Carla or anybody else. Encourage people to uh, pay attention to what's happening to their mind. But their mind, not mine or yours, their mind. And this is something that, again, is a skill set that you can develop on your own. It's a skill set to have the ability to help people along without telling them what's going to happen to them. And, uh, and that skill set will be, will help, help everybody.
Thank mm-hmm. you.